friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and this is week 48 of my floss tube and I'm just so thrilled that you're here. I design and do a bunch of stuff under the name Ardith Design and you can find me online <laughs> at ardithdesign.com and I'm just so thrilled that you're here with me today. so excited. I have a bunch of projects to show you and finishes and a new design and all those good things. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I talk about cross stitch. <laughs> I love cross stitch. I love all counted thread stuff. And in some small way, I hope to be a thread that connects historic needlework to contemporary needle art. <laughs> I love saving the stitches in sustainable stitching and using, you know, thrifty finds to heighten, well, <laughs> help my budget and reinvent or upcycle things that would otherwise go unloved. I really believe in, you know, th thrifting. <laughs> and a lot of people would say, oh, antiquing, or I'm going antiquing, or I'm going... And it's all, you know, you're going, you're going out. <laughs> so whether you're going to the thrift store, the antique store, yard sales, estate sales, op shops, the charity shops, you know, things are getting repurposed and reloved and not winding up in the landfill. And I think that is awesome. Yay. So today I'm going to show you my brand new release <laughs> and some of the new stuff that I've started and well, I'm going to have a little bit of shop talk as far as some shout outs and things and all this stuff. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't contain my excitement any longer. So I think we're just going to start right off the bat with my new release. Okay, here it is. Are you ready? Well, I'll show you. Okay, I'll show you two things that inspired my new release. How about that? <laughs> okay, the first is this vintage fondue cookbook. <laughs> I just love it. And I just love this kind of like happy go lucky. I just me in the mid century aesthetic, I tell you. So that. And then gnomes. Look at that cutie. <laughs> I love gnomes. And I have gnomes like all around my house. At Christmas time, I actually have a gnome tree. And I have to do a tour this upcoming year for, you know, my second year in floss tube land and show you my gnome tree. But I wanted a gnome cross stitch. And thanks so much to my wonderful viewer, Allie. She sent me, what, last year, she sent me some stitchy kindness in the mail. And they were the miniature dollhouse pretzels. Because she had heard me say that I needed those little pretzels in my life. <laughs> well, fast forward to June, mid-June 2019. And here is my new pattern. Yay! It is all about gnomes in the garden, having fun. They're eating and making Bavarian cheese dip in their large mixing bowl. They have their onions, the Hungarian sweet peppers, a wheel of cheese, and you know, camembert is recommended. Up here, it could be the sun or it could be a large wheel of cheese. <laughs> and those are the little miniature pretzels. This gnome is on top a mushroom and he is holding a bouquet of chive blossoms, which are edible and purple and gorgeous. And I used colonial knots there. 
what is a good pretzel without a cold beverage? You could think of this as beer, or you could, or the gnomes could be drinking root beer floats. Either way, I feel like that is a win, right? <laughs> They're holding the skewers for the fondue, the goodie that you use to, to heat up. So they're holding so fondue pot, pretzel, fondue pot, more cold beverages, skewer, and this. You could either say it's a wedge of cheese, or you could say that it is a bread wedge or something gluten filled. Or for my gluten free friends, you could just, you could just say it's cheese. And for my dairy free friends, well you could make up a really cool dip. <laughs> you could eat with pretzels that isn't necessarily cheese and this could be the sun. But I, I wanted to take on kind of that historic sampler look of like the bouquets, the really fun and funky sampler bouquets. And so instead of an urn, a bouquet, uh, the urn sampler urn, it is the mid-century wooden salad bowl. That's what this is. You know what I mean? Like grandma and grandpa had the wood salad bowl. <laughs> so here you go. And then I decorated it at the bottom with the EcoFit felt. It's like the polyester where it it's not wool. And I, I, I trimmed it. And then these are the little foam mushrooms, like dollhouse mushrooms. And then... I added the felt up here because I wanted to think like you're looking down on them like through the trees. They're fun forest festivities. I mounted this on a just one of the old cutting board, older cutting boards and it's a bamboo cutting board. And then this little thing is, I want to say it was a business card holder because it's got like a little ridge here or like maybe a recipe card holder but I affixed it using with glue onto the board and I'd like to make a nice big fancy bow or something to go on along there. I had Java girl stitcher. She just released a bow tutorial that I highly recommend and she showed how to do the bows with the wire. So here it is and I love it and it's so fun and all the things. <laughs> I hope you love it as much as me. I realize I just love the idea of community and food and like the mythical little gnomes gathering for camaraderie and friendship and all that good stuff. And, you know, Friday is, you know, gnome day. So why not start stitching some gnomes, right? <laughs> so there we go. There's my new release. Thank you so much for being so supportive. And Allie, again, thank you for sending me my very own pretzels to inspire me to make my own pattern. All of you are so beautiful and wonderful and I am so grateful and appreciative for all of you, whether you leave me kind comments or you just view my episodes, I am very grateful. And for that, I wanna say a shout out to Amanda L. She is putting together a database. Uh, according to her, she's been working on it for the last four years a database of all the floss tubers. I'll link her website below. And I went on there. She had me on the database already. How awesome is that? So that that made me feel good that I'm officially like part of the community. I mean, I'm part of the community, but for someone to recognize me in the database of other floss tubers, well, that was just swell. So that was awesome. If you are a floss tuber and you want to check the database to see if you are on the list, uh, again, I'll have that linked below. Or if you are a viewer and you want to check out the other 450 plus floss tube channels there are, well, there's a link for you to explore. And she's got it alphabetically organized. So for A, Ardith Design, I'm under A for Ardith, which is awesome. A for awesome. <laughs> Yay! I gotta move this book, my fondue book. It's making me hungry. And oh, all the good things. I wanted to talk about the fair, the Maryland State Fair. I touched on it last week. I contacted the section superintendent for Counted Thread again. 
no word back. I make a lot of phone calls. <laughs> that doesn't mean people necessarily pick up the phone or respond to emails or requests or whatever. But I wanted to get some clarification on what constitutes a frame and if it had to be in a traditional frame or if you could do an unconventional frame as long as you met the guidelines of the brown paper backing, the and oh, did I drop everything already? The ice screws. Now I got these at one of the big box stores. They were under $2 for the pack of the screw eyes to affix on the back. And then I got the wire set. Of course, I dropped it and get get it all icky ucky. Okay. The the wire set at the dollar store, dollar dollar tree. And I also got the brown paper in the gift section of Dollar Tree. So I'm happy about that. I at least have the supplies to make sure that I am in compliance for entering the Maryland State Fair. So yay, I'm excited about that. My next little piece is <laughs> in my rainbow bag. I ended up turning this little fast food restaurant toy into a needle holder and I'm so excited. I used the rare earth magnet and I might add other stuff in there, but for now it's holding the needle and I say that's awesome. I got a little goodie. I have not tested it yet to see about punch needle because again, 2019, I set that goal of learning how to punch needle. This is the pattern that I picked up at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, and I met the artist and designer while I was there. She uh, carried away designs. She had some really lovely pieces, and so I just I want to start. I, I checked out the punch needle books from the library, all the things. I just need to make this happen. I repurposed my <laughs> my dental. The, the little baggie I get from the dentist. I had gone and got some more needles, my highlighter to highlight patterns. And then I utilized the new little bags, the proprietary bags. They're not floss away bags, but they're the Joanne uh, white label bags. And so I put all of my threads together and this is for my Barbara Anna mermaid piece. Those are my colors. And I'm really excited to have them together. I even put my fancy floss in the bags just so they're all uniform. And I like that. I feel, I feel so organized and put together. <laughs> you know, some days I'm like, oh yay, I put on pants. <laughs> so now I can look at my stuff. Yay. It's all organized in my bag. You know, it's the little things in life, right? Oh, speaking of little things in life, I uh, I'm so excited. I'm kind of all over the place. My pattern is totally available via digital download and I have it in color and black and white and my instructions and yeah so <laughs> I'll have that linked below. I got oh I want <laughs> okay I'm a 90s kid all right so I grew up in the era of like the Tamagotchi pet things. So this was like another McDonald's Happy Meal toy from like the mid 90s I found. And in my forever quest to turn everything into a needle case. Oh, it's a needle case now. So <laughs> another rare earth magnet for my fake Tamagotchi thing. There's my little, I got to get one of the little clips to make this one of the, um, the scissor fob. And then I found this. Ah! Again, if you're a 90s kid or you had kids in the 90s, the caboodles. I was at Target. Caboodles are back. There was a, like a showpiece corner end, end cap, middle, I don't know, one of those display racks and it had caboodles and I squealed. Well, this is a, this is like an original caboodle and I'm, I was thinking about putting a project in and, you know, carrying it around because why not? I got a tremendous gift in the mail from my husband. It came in this wonderful little box and 
It came with all the stuff for Needles Dance, the collaborative piece from Hands On Design and Kathy Haberman, Ink Circles and the Summer House Stitch Works. Love it. And it, it came with the waxer, the needle minder, the beautiful threads. It came with, it came, even came with some finishing fabric. I was really happy with that. So I got this. I immediately, like immediately opened it up, filmed it, like did one of those unboxing videos. Nobody asked me to do an unboxing video. I just did one because I was so tickle pink that I got this in the mail, right? <laughs> And I immediately started on this project, like immediately. Well, power of Instagram and social media and interconnectedness of this world that we live in. I started this and about three hours into it, I realized there was a big mistake. <laughs> Not a big mistake, but I had made an error and so I reached out to Kathy Haberman, not knowing who charted this because it was a collaborative design. I reached out and said, hey, I think there's an error in the pattern. And I explained the error. And as Kathy calls them, an oopsie on her website. I love that. It's not an error or a mistake. It's an oopsie. What a fun and fun connotation. So I just let her know, hey, I think I found a little oopsie. And here's the oopsie. <laughs> and anyway, yesterday on Instagram. So I, I messaged her last week. So seven days later was an official announcement from Summer House Stitchworks and Hands on Design about the oopsie that I spotted. Pretty much the wording that I <laughs> used and that they are fixing it for the second round of printing. So for all of my viewers that have the first round of Needle Dance, I want to explain what I'm talking about here. Hmm. I'm not showing you the pattern. I, I covered up all the, all the pattern bits. So I made a working copy of the pattern. The pattern in the first printing was uh, like half, a little more than half the pattern is on one page and the other half is on the back side of the page. So I made a working copy. I taped the two pieces together and I immediately got to work on it. Well, I marked this with orange right here is the center mark that they denote the center for the pattern. So here's the top, the center mark denoting the pattern, but the pattern goes all the way down here. So basically the center mark is off. It's centered on the first page of the pattern, it's centered, but not for the entire two page pattern when you put it together. So the true center is down like 27, don't quote me on 27, go, go ahead and recount it. But basically the center marker is off. Well. Amanda May here, I have never started a pattern in the center ever. But for some reason, I started the pattern in the center for this pattern. Good news, bad news. I have about an inch and a half. So I, I'm still on the fabric. But I played Stitcher's Chicken in that I had gotten, you know, about three hours in before I realized, oh no, I centered, the center is wrong. It's, it, I centered the fabric wrong. Oh no, am I going to have enough room to finish stitching this? So I stayed up late and finished it because trying to count, like it's faster for me on a dark fabric in the middle of the night. It's faster for me just to stitch it instead of trying to count it. So, and yes, it's counted cross stitch. <laughs> But I just went ahead and did Stitcher's Chicken and found out, yes, I had enough room. And I said, okay, I'm just going to keep going. And again, I messaged Kathy, not knowing if she would read my message or if she was the right person to contact. But I just, as a designer, I've made mistakes. Hello, misspelling of a word, transcend. We all make mistakes. And so I just wanted to alert you to that. But I love, I absolutely love this pattern so much. Needles Dance. And again, if you have the first printing and you are a center starter, just hey, be cognizant of that, that it is 
like that, but they fix the mistake, they're doing a reprint, and life is good. So I have, that's my brand new start, and I love it. I know Bindi Stitchy had, Michelle Garrett had made a comment that she had felt this fabric, and she said it was quite stiff, and so she ended up going with a, like a red fabric for hers, which I am so, oh my goodness, I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, Michelle had made a comment that this was just too stiff for her. Well, I stitch in hand. So for me, this is amazing. Like the, the texture of this, it is pretty, I mean, it like stands on a tension. It's, it's a very commanding, like it's not a floppy fabric at all. So if you like that kind of thick, firm fabric, this, it, this is the right fabric for you. And this is the called 432 count blue linen. And I, uh, my husband bought me this box through Inspired Needle. And again, service, impeccable, box is perfect. Love it, love it, love it. I cannot wait to have this stitched up. I love it so much. Ah, pastels, all the things, right? Okay, the next thing that I am working on right now is my Barbara Anna Flowers from the Sea Mermaid. And I did a, a loose color conversion I'm using most of the called for DMC, but I did add in for like the greens are Victorian motto, the vintage aqua. And FYI, Nancy Turner of Victorian motto, she has like four different variations of the vintage aqua. She's got like 1940s vintage, 1950s vintage, just vintage. Like, so she's got a bunch of iterations. So and they're all gorgeous and I own them all. So, <laughs> so you might just want to play with your aquas if you decide to transfer anything out. And then the darker is the sulky. And I'm, I'm stitching that with one strand, but everything else with two strands. And I cannot wait to actually get to the mermaid. <laughs> and again, shout out to this beautiful community. I posted this on Instagram. And Barbara Anna Designs herself, but well, at least I think it was her and not her social media person, but said that she is so excited to see this on a lighter fabric. And I fangirled, girled, oh my God, she likes what I'm doing. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm excited to get further along on this mermaid. I love mermaids. <laughs> Speaking of mermaids is my comfort lighthouse. I made a little bit of progress. I focused on the house this week. And I'm very excited. I've been stitching this outside in the Maryland heat. It has been in the mid 80s and humid. It's that oppressive heat. When I lived in Northern California and it was 150, 115 degrees Fahrenheit where you would take a shower and you'd walk outside and your hair would dry in 11 minutes or less. Like that dry heat, people would get nosebleeds because it was so dry. Well, here in Maryland, like you hang your towels out to dry and they're still wet because it's just heavy and thick and I don't, I just was not prepared for the humidity. <laughs> so I'm out there like stitching in, in the humidity. So I'm a little crinkled, a little frazzled, but I love it. And I, so there's a couple little spaces here and those are for the legs of the bird. And I'm not sure if he's supposed to be a heron. There are gray herons in the area. I have a, I have a, a little tiny like micro like garden pond with fish in it and there's a gray heron and once a year at least I spot him coming to get a snack of my fish. <sighs> Ecosystem, habitat building. <laughs> oh, you have to go watch Donna Ray's latest video. Number one, she talks about dollhouses, hello. What's in the air? We're all talking about miniatures all of a sudden, but Donna Ray does a garden walkthrough tour of her. Oh my God, it's amazing. And she has a designated wildlife habitat sanctuary sign, which I want to learn more about that. And how do you get your property designated as a wildlife habitat? The lady is amazing. I want to know her in real life. <laughs> Hi, Donna Ray. <laughs> okay, the next thing that I have finished well I say finished loosely I finished it but don't know how to finish it and it is my prairie schoolers my little my little fairies 
I had gotten this pattern at the thrift store. This one I got from Threads and Twined, Trish Turner of threadsandtwined.com. Love it. And I did my own conversion using Sulky Threads. And I have it pretty much done. <laughs> I am so excited. And in my quest to not want to be done with this pattern, I started adding more flowers and I have to add the greenery in. And then I started adding right here some colonial knots, like trying to make it look like a little garden bouquet. Because one thing that I noticed is on the, my first fairy, I stitched her dress completely two strands of sulky, which is the equivalent of four strands of DMC. So it's got that really big, bold coverage. Well, when I got to her, I only stitched her with one strand and it looks sparse. And I don't like that. So I wanted to see if I could fill out her dress with the colonial knots and give it that dimensionality and the like flower pollen things. Again, I had added up here two strands and I did a combination of cross stitches and colonial knots here. So I'm just trying to add that. And again, my flowers, I'm going to add the greenery. And I was thinking about, tell me what you think here. And I'm going to add the needle that it calls for. And then on this fairy, adding either a perforated paper or perforated plastic. Not plastic canvas, but per cross stitch on perforated plastic. Say that three times fast. And adding the little strawberry. So see these little strawberries here? And having her hold the strawberry, right? And so it links them together. And then adding maybe some of the pollen coming on this side and try to link them both together. Oh, I love it so much. Tell me what you think if I should add that three-dimensional strawberry. I'm leaning towards yes. I feel like I need to do it. But I'm not sure, though, if I should make it like a big strawberry or a little strawberry or a felt strawberry. If I should just felt it. I don't know. Again, this is on 28 count thrifted, like a sky blue. If I were to do this all over again, I would do this same color palette, but on a 32 count fabric. So the coverage would be better right now. Again, the one strand of sulky on 28 count or 14 count Ada is, is sparse. It looks way better if you're on 16 or 18 count or 32, 36 count. And fun fact too, I absolutely love stitching. Where did I put it? My lighthouse. I'm, I'm sitting in a new spot today, so I'm all discombobulated on where I set things. This is stitched with Sulky on 36 count. This is the Sea Fog by r and Reproductions, and it's linen. It's the 36 count, and this is the coverage with one strand on 36. So I know a lot of people say that they're on the fence on whether or not they like 36 count because two strands is too bulky, one strand is too small, or not, it's too sparse, so it's that in-between count of fabric where you're just not sure. Well, hello just one strand of sulky is like mwah, perfection i'm not i'm not sponsored by them in this video i just i just really like i just really like their threads <laughs> so anyway i i feel like it's a no-brainer for me on 36 count and i love it what else okay save the stitches i got two awesome finds this week the first one is the rather rotund and impeccably round Uncle Sam. And I put him on my patriotic wall and I will insert a little video of my little, my new patriotic decor station. I'll insert that. <laughs> I got this really cool. I'm going to pull it out now and hope I don't knock anything over. 
I got this piece this weekend and it's welcome stitched beautifully on 14 count like a cream white I, I can't do this without it like um <laughs> the reflection on cream white Ada the framing is impeccable everything about this is impeccable I I love it and the back to, again to give you an idea of like the fair where they call for the back paper the eye screws and the wire so boom if you're like wondering if you're a visual learner like I am and you're wondering what I'm talking about earlier that's what I mean obviously that ripped paper but what are you gonna do fun fact about this piece and if you've been following my channel for any length of time you know what I'm about to say oh good somebody wants that I was about to throw it away yeah it just keeps happening people it just keeps happening so that piece I paid two dollars my eye screws the little these things just those were like two dollars oh no I got two eye screws here and a professionally framed impeccable cross stitch for two dollars yep is it my design aesthetic nope did I bring it home anyway yep I did it is mine now <laughs> I'm gonna insert a video of my gnome decor that I set up in my dining room. I hope that you all have a beautiful week. You matter. I appreciate you. I appreciate your viewership. Thank you for tuning in. Again, you can always find me online at Ardith Design or on my website, ArdithDesign.com. I hope you have a beautiful stitching week. Take care.